Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today we're continuing our series on how to do the most kind of common need to get it done stuff inside of Resolve to kind of get you familiar and help you get your feet wet if you've switched or you're thinking about switching from Premiere or another program to using DaVinci Resolve 15. Today we're going to talk about lower thirds inside of the Fusion page. Now we're not going to learn every single thing about Fusion. This is just kind of a down and dirty quick way to make a lower third and help you dive into actually doing stuff inside of the Fusion page. The whole layout of Fusion I find is really scary for people. A lot of people say that's a really hard concept for them, so we're going to try and explain stuff along the way to make this as simple as possible. We're here in the edit page inside of Resolve 15. I have a clip here courtesy of the nice folks over at raw.film. Check out a link to them in the description. And it's a nice man just looking pensively out the window. And we want to know who he is. So let's add a lower third here. There's a bunch of different ways that we can do that inside of Resolve, but we're going to make our own lower third inside of Fusion. And we're going to do it right on top of this clip just by going down here and clicking on the Fusion page. That's going to switch our entire interface over to Fusion, and this is where things get maybe a little bit scary. If you look up in the upper left, you should see some familiar buttons. We have our Media Pool panel. We also have our Effects Library. These work basically the same way as they do in the Edit page. If we look over to the right, we have our Inspector. Again, pretty much the same thing as the Edit page. This is where you can control properties of whatever you have selected. We also have some other buttons up here that we'll get into in a second. So let's talk about the nodes panel right here. I find a lot of people are really scared of nodes. They're really confused about how they work. If you are like me, you've probably used an NLE with layers or you've used After Effects, which works in layers or Photoshop, which works in layers. And Fusion doesn't work with layers. It works with nodes. And if you don't know what nodes are, they're basically just instructions telling Fusion to do one thing at a time. Think of it like this. If you were going to draw a stick figure on a piece of paper, you would draw a circle for the head, a line for the body, two lines for the legs, two lines for the arms. You take things one step at a time. And that's pretty much how you do things in Fusion, just one step at a time. And we're going to walk through those steps together. So when you load a clip into Fusion, you'll have two nodes that are already here. Just move them over. The first node is the Media In node. All this is doing is opening the footage inside of the Fusion page. It's saying, hey, you know this uh, clip of this guy looking out the window? Let's work with that. And the node that it's connected to is the Media Out node. What that's doing is telling Fusion, whatever comes into this node, that's what we want to render to the timeline. Basically, that's what's going to show up when we switch back over to the edit page. That's what's going to be here. So we have two sets of instructions here. Between loading in this footage and rendering it out to the timeline, we want to do some stuff. We're going to build a pretty simple graphic here. It's just going to be a black box with some text over it. So we have two major things that we want to do. We want to draw a black box and we want to put text over it. You can make a black box like a million different ways. If I go up to this bar here in the middle of my interface, I have access to a lot of the most common nodes inside of Fusion. All the way to the left is called a background node. I'm going to grab this and just drag it down into my nodes panel. And now we'll see that nothing happens. What is up? The reason nothing's happening is because we've grabbed this node that says to draw a background, but we haven't actually connected it to anything. Right now, all we're telling Fusion to do is open this footage and render it. It doesn't know what to do with this background. So we got to tell it to do something. Fusion can't read your mind. You can't just tell it to make something. You have to tell it what to do with it. Do you want to put the background over the footage? Do you want to mix it with the footage? So what we're going to do is add a node to tell Fusion what to do with that background node. We're going to do that using a merge node. Here on my toolbar in the middle of my interface, after the second little divider, I have a little icon for a merge node. I'm going to grab that and drag that in. And this is a very special node inside of Fusion. What this does is take something and put it over something else. What we're going to do is take this background node and put it over our original footage. And we can tell it to do all those things by linking these nodes together. The first thing I'm going to do is detach this arrow here. I can do that by mousing over it until it highlights blue and just clicking once. That's going to disconnect all of my nodes so that I can hook them up a different way. I'm going to take my media in node, but instead of putting it onto media out, I'm going to put it onto my merge, bring my merge down here, and I'm going to take my merge and put that to my media out. So right now we're telling this to load our footage, merge it with nothing, and then render it. And that's what it's doing. 
Nice job, Fusion. But we don't want it to merge with nothing, we want it to merge with the background. So I'm gonna grab this background node and grab this little gray square and connect that to my merge node. I'm just gonna drop it on and it's automatically going to hook this up to the right arrow and do all the fancy things that it needs to do. And if we look up in our viewer, we see it's black. What is that about? Is it time to rage quit? No, because it's actually doing exactly what we told it to do. This background is a full screen black background. If I have my node selected and I go over to my inspector and I change the color to, I don't know, bluish, we'll see that that changes everything that's showing up in this viewer. So we're telling this to load in our footage, put a blue solid color over everything and then render it. And that's what it's doing. But we don't want just a solid color over everything. We just want a little box for the background of our lower third. Again, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. What we're gonna do is just mask the area that we want. And again, we're gonna do that with a node. What I'm gonna do is grab my background node here and I'm gonna go up to the right of my third divider here in my toolbar where it says rectangle. And I'm just gonna click that once with my background node selected and look what happens. It adds a rectangle node, which is a mask, and it connects it to my background node. Let's look up in our viewer. It's added a rectangle mask to our background and then under our background, we can see our original footage. So now these nodes are saying, put a mask on this background and put it over our original footage and then render it. But this sucks, so we want it to be different. And remember, anytime that we wanna change the properties of something inside of Resolve, we select what we wanna change, which is gonna be this rectangle mask, and we go over to the inspector and adjust it. Here we have controls for width and height of our mask. And if we adjust these, we can see changes things over here in the viewer. We can also grab some on-screen controls. If I grab these little arrows in the middle, I can adjust what's happening to this mask. Something maybe like this to start out with. Maybe I'll make this a little less in the height. And that looks okay for now. So now we have the background for the text. It's the size that we want. It's merged over our original footage. Now we want to put text over it. So we need to tell Fusion two things. Make some text, put it over our background. So let's go up to our toolbar again. Here I have a node called text plus. We're gonna use that to generate our text. I'm gonna drag that out. We're also gonna want this to go over stuff. So I'm gonna grab my merge node again. I'm gonna break my connection between my merge one and my media out because I'm adding an instruction here. I want it to take my original footage, put the background over it, and then put the text over that. So it's this, then this, this, and then render it. So right now, this is merging what you see here with nothing and then rendering it. We're gonna connect our text by dragging that little gray square and just letting it go on the merge too. And now we'll see also nothing is happening. That's because we need to select our text node and adjust some controls for it. I'm gonna go over to the inspector where we adjust all our controls for everything. And where it says styled text, I'm gonna say some guy. And there we see some text over the things that we've made so far. Maybe pick a little better font. And I can grab my on-screen controls and just place this where I want. Okay, cool, it's looking pretty good. I do want to adjust my background now that I have my text in there. First thing I'm gonna do is select my rectangle mask and just adjust where that is. I'm also gonna select my background and change the color back to black. So there it is, some guy. Yeah, lower third, nice. But we don't want this just to be there the whole time. We want it to animate in. So what I'm gonna do is keyframe things. I'm gonna grab my playhead here in the time ruler and I'll move it, I don't know, 15 or 16 frames into the clip, which starts here at this yellow tick mark. And I'm gonna select whatever node I want to change. I'm gonna grab my rectangle mask and go over here to my inspector. And on the right, we'll see we have a bunch of these little diamonds here. You click one of these to add a keyframe. Infusion will animate any of these controls that has a keyframe here. The thing I'm going to animate is the center. I click that and it turns orange. And now I can move back to the start of the clip and I can adjust the center of this mask to go off screen. So basically it starts off screen. That's my first keyframe. And then it'll animate on screen all the way to this keyframe right here. I'm gonna do a similar thing with my text. I want this to fade on right after this background slides in. And you'd think I would adjust that in the text one node, but I'm actually gonna adjust that in the merge node because the merge node controls what things look like together basically. 
I'm gonna go over here to our inspector and there's a property called blend. I'm gonna set a keyframe right there and take this blend all the way down. That's gonna fade out that text. I'm gonna move a little bit farther in time and just push my blend up to one. And now let's take a look at our animation. If I were to play this back, that title slides in and fades up. Slide in, fade up, just like that. The one last thing I'm gonna do is adjust the way those keyframes work because this slides in and it stops really abruptly, which usually doesn't look that great. So I'm gonna go up here in the upper right to where it says spline and I'm gonna click that. And that's gonna open up a new panel down here by my nodes called the spline panel. Again, this looks really scary. It's kind of weird. Here's all you need to do though. I'm gonna select everything that I've animated so far. I select my displacement and hold shift and select blend. That's gonna bring up all of the data for everything that I've animated so far. Then I'm gonna go up here to the upper right and click this button right here, which basically just zooms this graph to make any sense at all. I'm gonna select all of my keyframes here, which is basically anytime there's a point on these lines. And then I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard. That's a shortcut for smooth. And all that's gonna do is just smooth out my animation Again, if you've worked with keyframes before in After Effects or in basically any type of video editor, this should make at least some sense to you. But pretty much if you just select your keyframes and hit S, things should look pretty good. Now let's take a look at our animation. And it kind of eases in, looks nice. So there's our lower third. And to bring this into our edit, all I'm gonna do is click this edit button and there it is in our timeline. So there you go. That's how to make a basic lower third inside of Fusion. I hope that makes things maybe just a little bit less scary for you. I know that nodes seem complicated and we're gonna do more videos exploring exactly how they work and why they're set up that way. But even just knowing a little bit about how they work, that you're telling Fusion one instruction at a time, linking them up in order, that's really powerful. And you can actually do a lot in Fusion with just that level of understanding. So I hope this made sense. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more videos on DaVinci Resolve, post-production, Fusion page, all of those kind of things, make sure to hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time.